Now, Mercury is the planet that's usually closest to Earth. Does that surprise you? Did me. Venus certainly gets closer to us than Mercury. It can be as close as 25 million miles. After all, Venus is the second planet from the Sun, and Earth is the third. Even Mars gets closer to Earth than Mercury. The red planet can come as close to our home as 35 million miles, as it will in the year 2287. <laughs> I won't be around for that. The average distance from Earth to Mercury is 48 million miles. But Mercury is still usually the closest planet to Earth. That's because Venus is usually somewhere on the other side of the Sun for 112 days. And Mars is usually far away in its highly elliptical, almost two-year-long orbit. That leaves Mercury zipping between the Earth and the Sun every 44 days, and thus usually closer to Earth than either Venus or Mars. Hey, good trivia question to pull on your friends, isn't it? 22 spacecraft have successfully flown to Venus, and over 30 spacecraft have flown to Mars. But only two have ever gone to Mercury. So, what's so hard about going there? Well, it has to do with the Sun. Mercury is not only the planet that is usually closest to Earth, it is also the planet that is always closest to the Sun. 28.6 million miles close, to be precise. Being that close to the Sun creates navigational challenges, to put it mildly. Any spacecraft going to Mercury gets accelerated by the tremendous gravitational pull of the Sun. The spacecraft will be moving too fast to go into orbit around Mercury. That's why the first spacecraft that went to Mercury, the USA's Mariner 10, merely flew by Mercury three times, but made no attempt to achieve orbit around Mercury. The only other ship to go to Mercury, the USA's Messenger spacecraft, took six and a half years to get there. Now that's a trip! Messenger did achieve orbit for a period of four years before finally running out of fuel and crashing onto the surface of Mercury on April 20th, 2015. Many other spacecraft have flown to Jupiter in about the same time or less than it took Messenger to go to Mercury. The hang-up is the deceleration of the spacecraft. Quite simply, it takes too much onboard fuel supply to fire the engines in the reverse direction and break the speed of the ship against the sun's great gravity. Slowing down sufficiently to get into orbit around Mercury is a no-go using rocket power. Some other way had to be found to slow Messenger down, a way that didn't use much or any fuel. Messenger was a hefty 2,400 pounds or so, loaded with nine pieces of state-of-the-art scientific equipment. Now, 55% of the total weight, or about 1,300 pounds, was fuel. But this fuel would not be used to slow the spacecraft down. The fuel would be used for five engine burns associated with gravity assists and also for orbital adjustments once Messenger got to Mercury. Now, gravity assists uses the gravity of a planet and the planet's orbital velocity to either speed up or slow down a spacecraft. If the ship approaches a planet at a forward-moving angle, that is, an angle in the direction the planet is revolving around the Sun, then both the planet's gravity and the orbital velocity of the planet give the spacecraft a slingshot boost, greatly increasing the speed of the craft and sending it off in a different direction. This boost in speed can be added to by the spacecraft firing its rocket engines at just the right time. Both of America's Voyager probes used Jupiter's massive gravity to slingshot them to the outer gas giant planets and eventually out of the solar system. Gravity assist can also be used to slow down a spacecraft, as in the case of MESSENGER. By entering a planet's orbital path ahead of the planet, the planet's gravity pulls back on the spacecraft and slows it down. An engine burn is necessary at this time to escape the orbital path of the planet. MESSENGER performed one gravity assist flyby of Earth, two gravity assist flybys of Venus, and three gravity flybys of Mercury. Only then had MESSENGER been slowed enough to enter into orbit around Mercury. The probe traveled an astounding 5 billion miles to get to Mercury from Earth. That's farther than Pluto is away from Earth at its most distant. The name MESSENGER is an acronym, almost as clever as its intricate flight path to Mercury. Because Mercury is the fastest-moving planet, 
the ancient Greeks appointed Mercury as the messenger of Olympus. News traveled fast even back then. Messenger really stands for Mercury Surface, Space Environment, Geochemistry, and Ranging. Hmm, what do you think? Did they have a contest to come up with that? Now, the good news is, there's another mission to Mercury underway right now. It is a combined ESA-JAXA space mission that is bringing two orbiting satellites to Mercury. The mission doesn't use an acronym for its spacecraft, it has a real name, Bepi Colombo. No, it's not a cartoon character. Dr. Giuseppe Colombo, after whom the spacecraft is named, was an Italian mathematician and professor of applied mechanics. He worked with NASA on the Mariner 10 mission to Mercury. Beppe is Giuseppe's childhood nickname, which everyone knew and loved him by. NASA had been content with one flyby of Mercury, the first ever. But Professor Beppe calculated that with a slight adjustment of the flight path to enable a gravity assist at Venus, Mariner 10 could fly by Mercury again and again on different orbits around the Sun. Thanks to Beppe, NASA got three flybys of Mercury for the price of one. Bebe Colombo, the spacecraft, is scheduled to perform nine gravity assist flybys – one at Earth, two at Venus, and six at Mercury itself. Each planetary deceleration slows Bebe Colombo relative to the speed Mercury is moving around the Sun. This will allow for orbital insertion. Otherwise, Bebe Colombo would head off into the Sun. Now, once in orbit around Mercury, Bepi Colombo's Mercury Transfer Module, or MTM for short, will release two satellites, one European, the MPO, Mercury Planetary Orbiter, and one Japanese, the MIO, Mercury Magnetospheric Orbiter. Both are expected to orbit Mercury for one year. Altogether, the MCS, Mercury Composite Spacecraft, consists of the MPO, the MIO, the MTM, and MOSIF which protects the spacecraft from the Sun and houses the electronics for MIO. This alphabet soup of mission components highlights the other reason it is difficult to get to Mercury. After six gravity-assist slowdowns, six engine burns, 18 orbits around the Sun, six and a half years of travel time, and nine billion miles of distance, you have to bring a tailored complex of equipment. It's like that mountain picnic you'd like to go on. You can't just drive there. You have to hike a long way up a tricky mountain trail and bring along insect repellent, sunscreen, and your hat. Oh, and lunch and beverages. It's not easy. Bippo Colombo has packed it all, including lunch. Nah, not really. The design is incredibly complex. Nothing can face the sun, not even the solar panels. The solar panels must be kept turned almost to a right angle to the sun, or the heat and particle flux will corrode the solar cells, and without electricity, you have nothing. Therefore, at right angles to the sun, the solar panels must be extra long, as if there were only a little bit of sunshine. Bepi's solar panels are 50 feet long. The sun shield must remain gyroscopically aligned towards the sun so that all instruments are always in the shade but still have a line of sight to what each is meant to monitor. And there are a lot of instruments. Five in the JAXA orbiter and 11 in the ESA orbiter. It's one amazing picnic. Anyway, the science objectives are meant to add to what we have learned from the previous two missions to Mercury. The data collected by Bepi Colombo will enable scientists to study the planet's interior and composition, along with Mercury's geology and surface morphology, Mercury's magnetic fields formation and evolutionary history, the planet's solar-wind interactions, and overall environment. As a metal-rich planet, Mercury may hold a vast wealth of minerals that MESSENGER failed to detect. Bebe Colombo launched in October 2018 and still has a long way to go before it goes into orbit around Mercury. However, Bepi has already flown past Mercury and returned new photographs. The European Space Agency is excited about its first hot mission. All of the S's previous missions have been cold missions to objects further out into space, such as Mars, the asteroid belt, comet rendezvous, and elsewhere far out in the solar system. Well, all I can say is best wishes to Bepi Colombo. Let's hope all goes well on its 800 degrees Fahrenheit mission to Mercury. 
Let's hope that Mercury's long tail of exosphere gases, sodium, magnesium, and potassium, blown off the planet's surface by the solar wind, don't fog up the lenses or coat the solar panels. Have a nice time! Ciao, baby!